Now in this video, we're going to look at using an inductor right there to boost voltage. Of course, this is just a simple circuit. There's a lot of ways to improve it, but you should be able to understand the basic principles involved. And so right away, we're going to do a demonstration of this circuit. You can see we got the power supply set to 5 volts right there. The multimeter, I have these are little alligator clips that I crimped a, a jumper wire to so it's easier to take uh, voltage measurements we got the black one to the negative supply rail right there and uh, there you can see we got 5 volts at the board we're gonna go to the capacitor though and you're gonna see it's a bit shy of 5 volts that's because we got a rectifier dialed we'll talk about why uh, coming up that is limiting the voltage that it can charge to for now but when I hit the button now you're gonna see that uh, voltage uh, quickly jumps up and the uh, better we design this the more quickly it will go also the quicker that I hit the button right there the higher it will go and now it's probably discharging through the meter and uh, so it's gonna go down uh, kind of quickly if we didn't have it measure meter it takes lower but again this meter hardly needs any current we could greatly improve the circuit so now let's talk about how this circuit works. So we got a couple resistors in parallel right here. That's so we get twice the uh, current as there would be for one of them. And then we have an inductor right there. It has a diode connected to it headed to a capacitor. So that's why we had the original capacitor charged to a diode drop below 5 volts. This supply voltage right there. So you can see that resistor to the inductor, inductor to the top of the switch there. That's always connected over here. That's the anode of the diode. Cathode, the uh, gray band is up there even though you may not be able to see it. And then there's the positive side of the capacitor. Negative side to the uh, negative rail. And of course you cannot exceed the uh, maximum voltage of the capacitor with this circuit we uh, struggled to get above uh, 10 volts. So we're very far shy of the 50 that this one is rated for, but always check for what your capacitors are rated for. So in any case, that's the initial uh, starting point of uh, the circuit. When we uh, close the switch, now current starts flowing again. Once the capacitor got charged, current stopped flowing. But in any case, we close the switch, current can start flowing again. But inductors do not instantly conduct uh, current. It's uh, far faster than you can sense, but it does take a little bit of time for current to flow. Then you open the switch. Without this circuitry here, the inductor is going to keep uh, pushing uh, current. There's going to be a little spark. So it generates whatever voltage it needs to make a spark to uh, connect the uh, circuit until the inductor runs out of energy. And so we added this circuitry here. A lot of times you'll just see a diode right there coming back to the inductor so that uh, the current flows through there and none of it goes through the switch. But in this case, we have the diode going to a capacitor. So it's doing basically the same thing. It's preventing uh, damage to the switch, but it's charging a capacitor instead. As you put more current into a capacitor, its voltage rises. So that's the basic uh, principle for this circuit. Now, of course, the inductor, it has a magnetic field that collapses. It pumps a certain amount of current into the capacitor, and then it's done. It doesn't have any more uh, stored energy. And uh, so you got to keep repeating the process. So one way to make this efficient is to only have it closed for as long as you need to get the current uh, flowing, and then have it open only for as long as you need the current to pump into the capacitor. So you would do that very fast. That would make it much more efficient. Now, the reason why I used a 10 millihenry inductor is because that's what I was able to buy. It's a you know, somewhat high value inductor and I didn't pay a ton of money for it. So you gotta just look for that. Generally, you don't buy inductors in a wide range because they're, they're kind of expensive. You can if you want to, but uh, you'll spend a lot more money. Now, that's 10 millihenry. Sometimes, when you're buying inductors, there will be an M when they mean uh, micro Henry. But of course, micro, right there is a mu symbol. Micro is one one thousandth of the value of uh, milla. And uh, so if it says 10 mh and it seems extremely cheap, there's a good chance that it's actually uh, micro Henry. Also, you can see the size of this right here. If you can tell the components uh, quite a bit smaller, it's. Uh, going to be micro henry right there so 
that's uh, really about it. I'm going to keep this simple. Of course, you can improve this circuit a lot. Look for those improved uh, circuits. I don't have any uh, that I designed, but they're out there. So, in any case, hopefully this helped you understand the principles, though, and it's easy to uh, replicate. So, hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I post on the screen, and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.